हरिओम प्रणाम स्वामी जी ओम सहना सह नौ बुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नवदी तमस्तु मिषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम ओम नमो नारायण प्रणाम स्वामी जी hearty welcome to one and all who have gathered in this class today is our fourth class as we missed last week of tatva bodha after giving an introduction to vedanta in the first class in the second class swami ji talked about the greatness of bhagavad pada and in the third class swami ji began the text tatva bodha before that swami ji once again summarized the previous class and explained the meaning of atma gnanam atma gnanam is the study of self and it is the ultimate purpose of this study this book tatva bodha expounds the essence of life and explains vedic terminology tatvam meaning reality and bodham means knowledge knowledge of truth the difficulty is gaining this knowledge as this knowledge is not not an objective knowledge it is the knowledge of the subject and that subject is myself there is no subject object division here i who am searching for freedom i am not really bound but because of ignorance i become identified with the body mind intellect complex and other worldly objects and get the notion that i am bound my nature is sat chit ananda swarupa moksham is owning up our own swarupa swami ji entered the mangala shloka of tatva bodha which begins with vasudeva yogendram yogendrano this is the mangala shloka for this particular text to be chanted in the beginning and end unlike the mangala shlokas of what we chanted now in this mangala shloka we salute paramatma the guru he is also salutes govinda padar who is the guru of shankara bhagavat padar shankaracharya considers guru and paramatma as one so we say guru paramatmano abeda guru and ishvara are one and the same going to expound tatva bodha for the benefit of mumukshu mumukshu means those seekers who have intense shraddha and devotion we will now hear from pooja swami ji हरिओम श्रुतिस्मृतिपुरा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बातरायण सूत्रभाष्य भगवन ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमवत् व्यादेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम श्रीदक्षिणामूर्त नम नौ वी कैन टुगेदर चांड द फस्ट इन्वोकेशन श्लोका ऑफ तत्वबोधा which uh, we have already learned in last session om vasudevendra yogendram natva jnana pradam gurum 
मुक्षूता तत्वबोधो विधीयते श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम सो वी कुड नॉट डू द लास्ट सेशन बिकॉज आउटेज ऑफ नेटवर्क therefore we will continue uh, from the point where we left so we had a long discussion on guru and the praising the guru the invo invocation shloka by shankaracharya ji is uh, very relevant in this uh, sense so that is uh, understood now today we are going to enter into the main test the first sentence of tattvabodha now before entering to a test one should uh, know if uh, he or she is eligible for studying this test as we know whatever book we read we understand what subject is and uh, what is my interest so this uh, particular book is uh, helping me or it is useful for me it is worthwhile reading so in every uh, action or we can say in every karma before doing that we think about that so this uh, practice is in this vedanta or all other uh, philosophies we follow that therefore before studying the test the student should uh, know that he is uh, eligible for he is uh, qualified for studying that so knowing this uh, system is called anubandha chadushtaya so introductory connection of a test book the introductory connection of a test book related to the students the reader who is going to read so that is four fold anubandha chadushtaya so they have uh, Uh, divided into four the first one is called adhikari so whom the for whom the test is meant the test is useful for that uh, person who is reading, uh, reading that so he is called adhikari now in tattvabodha the first sentence itself we will get the answer for that so the second part of this anubandha chadushtaya is the subject discussed 
that is the vishaya this is very important to know whether the subject is connected to me or not because we are interested to study this uh, book but uh, what we are going to gain from this so that is the purpose the object of studying so uh, what we think about this study of tattva bodha is from my side as i mentioned before also all the students should memorize or they try to memorize the subject discussed in this so that after learning this tattva bodha uh, one uh, would be prepared or qualified for teaching this subject so once we study this uh, tattva bodha we could teach or we could uh, discuss this subject with others that is the uh, dedication of study we are not just listening to the uh, subject as the lecture we are listening it no because here the examination is after studying this one should uh, be ready and uh, now fit for teaching it so therefore not down the special points or refer other books and spend some time on this so this will be very useful and very fruitful for the uh, life the main aim of the study is liberation that we know but along with that as i said we should uh, discuss this each other or you know, one can teach others so we got some good ideas for betterment of our life then that we should uh, deliver we should share this ideas this knowledge with others so that is the purpose the object of the uh, test book that is vedanta as whole but here the liberation moksha shastra this vedanta is called moksha shastra that we have already learned that so out of uh, anubandha chadushtaya the first one is adhikari the second is subject and third is of course the connection between subject and object it means sambandha the connection uh, with the sadhana the practice and the uh, effect of that the phala the purpose of that sometimes what happens we practice something but the purpose is not gained the purpose is not uh, fulfilled so then the practice is in vain therefore uh, this connection should be not this mean the right path the right way of practicing it that is called sambandha so this we we will learn uh, gradually when we 
progress in this study. And the fourth part of that, of course, is the purpose, purpose itself. The ultimate uh, aim of the study. So this way, each test book has uh, this uh, uh, four uh, parts and then we follow with that. So here, Shankaracharji, uh, following the ideal tradition of Bharatiya outlook on life, that is uh, the spiritual growth of the being, human being. So how human being can achieve that? So he is following that. Therefore, he is starting with the sadhanas. Now, we know this word sadhana. It is very uh, famous and uh, always we say we are doing sadhana. Uh, we should practice sadhana and all those. Now, what is this sadhana? means in Vedanta. The word meaning of sadhana is, you can say, a discipline, a practice, which we supposed to follow to reach the goal we want to. So this is the implied meaning of sadhana the discipline, the practice, which we supposed to do to fulfill the uh, goal or reach the goal. So now we have so many disciplines. We are practicing so many sadhanas in our life. Each sadhana is uh, giving some fruit, some effect, that is for sure. But uh, what is uh, the sadhana in Vedanta? That is the sadhana in Vedanta is uh, knowing the self of revealing the self. That is our sadhana. The seeker practice that sadhana which helps him to reveal himself. In that sense, now I am teaching, I am talking to myself or I am talking on me. And same way you are listening yourself or you are listening about yourself. This is how it happens. So now in this uh, limited existence, the limited uh, existence means we are identifying ourselves with our body mind complex. So, this is the cause of limitation. So, due to this limitation, we are suffering from body and mind the activities of body and mind is disturbing us. As we discussed in last sessions, we should know our own existence beyond all this. So to say, Vedanta Sadhana is leading us 
to this limited existence from this limited existence to universal assistance this is the ultimate reality of vedanta so in other words uh, we say this body mind complex is microcosm and uh, sadhana leads or is our mind changes its thought process into macrocosm so this limited feeling the limited experience is limiting our existence this is a wonderful uh, idea which vedanta delivers it says you are not limited you cannot be limited but you feel that i am limited so change this change this separation then you have the original your inherent existence that beingness so give apply mind there be mindful with this thought i cannot be limited my nature is unlimited like the sky like the ether the mind inside makes all the limitations with this uh, empirical existence of body so this is the sadhana of vedanta now you see we are taking a sadhana which is very important very essential for our own existence so the application of sadhana the practice of sadhana is not meant for anything else than being with us so on with us therefore in the first sentence itself shankaracharya ji states that the he promises us by learning this you will reach the ultimate goal limit, limit uh, liberation of the limitedness the ultimate bliss emancipation that you pursue for so with this we pronounce the first sentence what shankaracharya says first i pronounce uh, then you can follow me sadhana chadushtaya sambanna adhikarinam sadhana chadushtaya sambanna adhikarinam moksha sadhana bhutam moksha sadhana bhutam तत्वेक प्रकार वक्षाक प्रकार वक्ष वर्ड आचार्य जी टेक्स अप इज साधना द साधन चतुष्टय संपन्न अधिकारिण इन संस्कृत we have 
compounds, long, long compounds. Therefore, sometimes people are uh, afraid of reading Sanskrit or studying Sanskrit because when they see and they compare with uh, English or any other language, we don't see such long words. Now, sadhana chatushtaya sambanna adhikarinam is considered to be single word. It is one word. So we have to separate accordingly. We have to open the uh, compound, decode the compound. No, now we say decoding. So sadhana chadushtaya sambanna adhikarinam. He says, for whom I am going to expound this knowledge? Who is uh, the Adhikari, the qualif uh, qualified uh, seeker for this knowledge? So he is qualified with the Sadhana Chatushtaya. Sadhana, we already learned, fourfold of sadhanas. Sadhana nam chatushtaya, sadhana chatushtaya. Sadhana chatushtaya sambanna. So qualified with fourfold sadhanas. Sambanna adhikari nam. So those adhikaris who are qualified with fourfold sadhana which is being discussed. Sadhana chadushtaya sambanna adhikarya. For them, moksha sadhana bhutam, especially for liberation, the moksha sadhana bhutam, the sadhana which will lead to liberation, so this is the speciality of sadhana which is discussed in this test book. That is what Shankaracharya says. So moksha, we know liberation, as I said. The existence, the existence, consciousness and bliss, Satchidananda, that is the essential nature of a being or a substance, whatever it is there. So to know that, to experience that moksha, we need to do sadhanas, do, to practice some disciplines, some special practices. You see, as we see here, the sadhanas are foundation for achieving. We can say the first achievement is sadhana, the foundation. Now, how we design a the foundation, how uh, a civil engineer will make a foundation for a building. He will design uh, for what load it has to be supported. So how much load it has. Accordingly, the civil engineer will design the foundation. For so design of a foundation uh, starts from uh, the ground as we know. It is grounded there. So on that, the entire structure, the entire building 
is going to come up. Similarly, here the sadhana is our foundation. We are going to build something very, very supernatural. Beyond our intellect and mind. But the intellect and mind is the means. We are uh, cultivating, we are uh, uh, preparing the mind and intellect to bring that higher knowledge. So therefore, here the sadhana is very important in this sense. So the what education makes the right practice. That is what discussed here. So in the next word, Shankarajari says, Tattva Viveka Prakaram Vakshyamaha. Tattva Viveka Prakaram. Tattva is the reality, the reality of self, the Atman, the Brahman, or the reality of the world which we see. Tattva viveka prakaram. Viveka means separating. Tattva viveka is distinguishing or discriminating. So know what is real, what is unreal. That, that is what means here. So tattvana, tattvanam vivekaha or tattvasya vivekaha. So we discriminate the existence, whatever it is there. The subject is that, tattva viveka, prakaram, more or the method of that. So tattva viveka prakaram, the method of discrimination of the tattvas, realities. That is tattva viveka prakaram. Vakshyamaha. I shall say or I, saw, I shall discuss. I am going to discuss. That is what it means. So now this Tattva Viveka Prakara is the subject here. As uh, I said, the Anubandha Chadushtaya, you can see in the first sentence itself, Ajarji directly mentions that. Anubandha Chadushtaya. We can get some idea even for the invocation sloka, Vasudeva Indra Yogi Indra. But uh, it is clear here. Sadhana Chadushtaya Sampanna Adhikari. The first sentence, first uh, word, it says, Adhikari Sadhana Chadushtaya Sampanna. Who wants to liberate himself from this world, from this sorrow? Now he doesn't want to suffer from this. Therefore, he wants to liberate himself. Now, when we say uh, liberation, we may think that it is separating uh, one thing from another the one part from another, something like that. It is not really. Here, as I said, here the liberation is from ignorance. We liberate ourselves by knowledge. 
you know, the speciality of knowledge. The speciality of knowledge is it cannot create anything. And it cannot destroy anything real. The knowledge cannot destroy any substance. It cannot create or modify any substance. This is a speciality of knowledge. I know this is book in front of me. I see a book. Now, knowing that this is a book, what happens there? Is their book is created? No. Only what it is there is known through some means because perceiving, seeing is through eyesight. So I am seeing this book through eyesight. That is the meaning of I see, I know. Now this knowledge brings uh, the reality into the mind or the existence of that particular book. The book is not created or the existence is, as you know, existence cannot be created. So book has the same existence as I have, as we have. Because book is an object, we are objectifying it, that's all. Therefore, the real cannot be changed by knowledge. Therefore, knowledge is tattva viveka only, only discriminating the real existence of an object. The cognition of that object. Now here in our sub, uh, our object is our own self. So as I said, we are identifying ourselves with body and mind. We are limiting ourselves within body and mind. So the Tato Viveka Prakara. The Vedanta says, bring this thought process into the mind that you are not this body, not this mind. Your being is unlimited, universal. It is all pervading, all pervading everywhere. So this uh, Tattva Viveka Prakara is knowledge. Now, when we say knowledge, we have many informations. So when I say knowledge, we should distinguish this knowledge from the informations what we gather. When we read a book, listen to the uh, music or some news or whatever, we get different kinds of informations. Some are useful or some are just information useless. So this knowledge is not information. It is not informing anything, but it says, if you make this thought process, then gradually you can experience that. 
The experience is the knowledge here. And the experience is not different from the experiencer. So this is the, this is the wonderful uh, effect of the knowledge. Because the experiencer and experience is not different. So therefore, knowledge is directly giving us the, the existence of our own self or connecting with us. Uh, we can't use even the word connecting because there is no connection. Tattva viveka prakaram vakshyamaha. The Acharya uses this word, Tattva viveka. He is not saying uh, the viveka of Brahma, the discrimination or discriminative knowledge of Brahman or discriminative knowledge of uh, uh, Atma or uh, uh, Bhagavan, God or anything like that. He says Tattva viveka. So if you want to know the reality, you are qualified to study this Tattva Bodha. That is what he says. This is a promise what we say in our uh, scriptural language. Pradijna. So before uh, starting the, the, or writing anything, the first statement of the promise. So I promise to do this. So what he is going to do is Tattva Viveka Prakaram Vakshyamaha. So Shankaracharya promised that I am going to discuss here the nature of reality for those the serious seekers of Brahman, the Moksha. Because here the liberation and the Brahman is not different. That we will learn later. Because uh, if you uh, think in that way, Atma Cha Muktihi, he says, the liberation is not different from Atma. Atma itself is Mukti. It is not a state of consciousness which uh, achieved after uh, practice, after a long uh, time. No. This is yourself. The Atma Acha Mukti. So this way, the first uh, uh, statement of Tattva Bodha says that Sadhana Chadushtaya Sambhannadhi Karinam Mokta Sadhana Bodham Tattva Viveka Prakaram Vakshyamaha. Now, this is the first sentence. And when we reach at the last sentence, there it says, Atma Vit Samsaram Tirtva Brahma Ananda Mihaiva Prapnoti. You may wonder why I chanted the last sentence. Actually, it is not last sentence. There are two uh, Sruti and Smritis. Atma with Samsaram Tirtva. Atma with the knower of self will cross this Samsara, the ocean of birth and death, the ocean of names and forms. Then Brahmanandam Ihaiva Prapnoti. So the knower of self will experience the Brahmananda, the bliss, the ultimate bliss. Here itself, Ihaiva Prapnoti. Not even leaving this body. Before leaving this body, while in this body, 
with this body, the Atma with the, the knower of self will experience that. So here he ends his statement. For this statement, Sankaracharya gives two uh, pramanas, that is Sruti and Smriti. So Brahmananda Mihaiva Prapunodi, this is the conclusion. Tattva Vivega Prakaram Moksha Sadhana Bhutam, Tattva Vivega Prakaram Vakshyamaha, this is the introduction, the first statement. Now, we see a connection here. What is stated primarily, what is prom, prom, promised, that is fulfilled. So he completed the promise at the end. So this uh, introduction and conclusion, they are connected. This is another important point while we learn a textbook, we could be aware about this. This is called Shadlinka, six-fold meanings or six-fold means to correctly understand the subject matter of a textbook. I said Shad Linga. Shad means six. Linga means means or uh, the proof or the system of techniques connected with the textbook. In our tradition, we have numerous test books starting from Vedas. Even today, after with uh, all our uh, technological support, we could not make a catalog for this uh, test book. How many test books we have really uh, in our uh, tradition, in Sanadana Dharma? There are so many, so many in different categories, various subjects, the subjects related to the present life, the life, uh, now the life after, or this creation with everything, related to everything. So the reader, the seeker should know how to read and understand a test book, especially when that test book is leading with spiritual knowledge, profound knowledge. Obviously, the uh, student should his uh, should make his mind fit for that so those means are called shadlinka i will uh, chant a shloka a stanza which uh, says about this shadlinka because it is useful for our understanding so uh, if you are, if you like to write down, note down, you can do that. Or later on, you can note down. So I will chant those uh, sloka. Upakramo pasamharo abhyaso purvata palam arthavato papatischa lingam tat. Actually, uh, this is a technical sloka. So, only says about these six points. Upakramo pasamharo abhyaso purvata phalam 
ಅರ್ಥವಾದ ಉಪಪತ್ತಿಶ್ಚ ಲಿಂಗಂ ತಾತ್ಪರ್ಯ ನಿರ್ಣಯ ಲಿಂಗಂ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಪೋರ್ಟಿವ್ ಪ್ರೂಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ತಾತ್ಪರ್ಯ ನಿರ್ಣಯ ಗಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಬುಕ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಸಮರಿ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಬುಕ್ that is tatparya the sum up of that subject which is discussed now we see what are the six just to understand that first upakrama upasamharo upakrama means introduction upasamhara means conclusion just now i introduced that so the upakrama and upasamhara the introduction and conclusion should be connected it should be related to the same subject regardless its a discussion a large uh, discussion it should come with the same subject that is called upakrama upasamhara ekavakyata so the one meaning understood from upakrama and upasamhara this is i am discussing here because we are planning to take up this study with a uh, no systematic way that as i mentioned today the students the listeners you all should be prepared for teaching it so it should be with maximum clarity so the system when we understand the system so we should uh, learn all these technicalities so how uh, a person become a scholar or uh, uh, no profound uh, knower of this knowledge so who who become acharya of this so he knows all these technicalities how to read a book under understand and give the sum up of that book so this is how he understand this so introduction and conclusion should be correlated on the same subject now the second one is abhyasa so in between abhyasa abhyasa the word meaning is repetition so what is introduced it will uh, take different views or whatever necessary it may take uh, many instance uh, many other subject or related subject regardless that it should the same subject should be repeated is not that what is introduced is gone and uh, the subject or the discussion went to another uh, direction so that is called abhyasa now the third point is apurvata any book when we read we think about that what is the speciality of this book the uniqueness of this book because we have many books or even in one subject in vedanta we have many book numerous books and many talks are available many acharyas are teaching so when we take up uh, a book 
for study we should be aware about what is the speciality of this book the uniqueness of this book so as we uh, have taken up tattva bodha for study so this book has a uh, very uh, special characteristics that is this in very simple it is made for just beginners beginners of vedanta so it is introducing uh, the vedantic theory in step by step uh, process and that is to uh, in question answer style the style of the book is question and answer so that is very reliable and uh, oh, very easy way of teaching so what is that then answer what is this then answer so this is the uh, special characteristics of this book but even with the, this uh, uh, easy study style this book is giving a uh, very good introduction or introductory uh, knowledge to study vedanta further so if you have learned this uh, uh, tattva bodha you can easily learn any other test book of vedanta you will get uh, the correct uh, idea delivered in that book so this is what is called apurvata and then comes phalam phalam the fourth point that is phalam we know the purpose the attainable what is attainable what is gained from this that is phalam so in our uh, upanishads and bhagavad gita and some stotras like vishnu sahasranama any of uh, uh, this kind of uh, test we take there always mention of attainable many many uh, no fruits and then effects so this is called phala this should be uh, stated in between or in the beginning or the end because without a phala nobody will do effort so our effort should be fruitful so the that is why phala then comes as the fifth point arthavada arthavada means admiration praising something or censoring something this is called arthavada so in this arthavada in admiration or in the sense of censoring they will give many stories and examples in between so once upon a time there was a king called janaka and he did uh, uh, study the vedanta uh, from ashtavakra or something like that the story will come and when we learn the story and he realized he, uh, himself and he become a jnani in bradharnika upanishad we have uh, janaka yajnavalkya uh, conversation so like that these are called arthavadas so when we uh, study those stories experience to one's experience then we are inspired to study so our uh, uh, practice of sadhana will get a special enthusiasm special energy so this is the meaning of arthavada this is also very necessary in between we should know who uh, practiced this who did this what he achieved 
So it is uh, interesting. That is called Arthavada. So in this test book, especially, we don't uh, find uh, very uh, no, special Arthavadas. But as when we learn, we can add some stories into this, some examples. So this way, the Arthavada will come. And the sixth point, the last point is Upabhati. This is another important point. So we know what we are doing, what is uh, the achievement or what is the meaning of this, everything we know. But if there is no logical ground for the statements stated in this test book, then it is not really useful. The mind will not uh, take up those statements without logical ground. It may just take up for some time and try to uh, understand that. But at last, the mind will leave that point if there is no logic applied into that, no practicality is applied into that. The mind will think this is not relevant, irrelevant uh, uh, statement. Why should I follow it? So what we supposed to follow should be stated very clearly with logical support. Then that is useful for manana. Otherwise, uh, just reading the book, manana won't be possible. Because manana, manana means contemplating with the logical support. The tarka, we say tarka. And in this context, when we say logic, there are no written laws or log logical theories. According to the subject, according to the context, we should apply our logic. It should be related to the scriptural knowledge, that is all. Or the knowledge delivered by eminent acharyas who have learned it and experienced it. So this is the logical ground. When we say logic, like we have a law book, uh, you may think uh, Vedanta also has a law book. No. The Vedanta says Sravana and Manana. First listen and then do manana, contemplate on that. Apply your logic. The Shruti Siras Tarko Nusandhiyatam. For this, uh, in uh, Sadhana Panchaka, Ajarji says, Sankarajarji says, Shruti Siras Tarko Nusandhiyatam. The logic you apply to convince the mind should be from the scriptures. It should be based on scriptural knowledge. Otherwise, uh, the logic you apply, uh, material, uh, material, uh, no, with the material experience, material experience will not uh, support you to that. It may lead you uh, through a wrong way. Sometimes it is not uh, appreciative to take any logic and apply. So therefore, when we discuss a subject, the logic we apply, we should apply logic. In all our philosophies say, the seeker have, has the freedom to apply his logics and ask questions 
to understand the subject. Because without convincing the mind, you cannot uh, uh, take the subject into depth. The mind will not allow you to follow that subject unless it is not convinced. Even with children, if we want to convince something, we should give some logic. No, our mothers know they apply some little logic to convince the children because they also ask why it is, why it is, and what it is, and all this. So this is the six uh, six uh, parts or uh, supportive means for knowing the subject correctly. So with this, we I conclude. Uh, my uh, talk here. Now over to you for the questions. Hari Om Namo Narayana. Swamiji, before starting going to the question answer, just want to tell you that share with you that the study group for English class is separated from the Malayalam. So whatever questions you wanted to ask or any elaboration on the subject to what Swamiji has taught today, you can put it in the group so that Swamiji will give elaborate answer also to that. So we will know what, it, what you want. So please make use of this opportunity. Thank you. Any question, questions? Uh, there are no more, uh, no questions uh, posted yet and uh, nobody raised their hands also. If you have any questions, you may raise your hand or post the question in the chat. And I checked the YouTube, there are, uh, there are no questions posted there. Yeah, there mm -hmm. are two people. One is, the first one I could see, uh, Rajani B. Please unmute and ask your question. Hari Om Swamiji. Hari Om. Um, this is Rajni here. Um, my uh, question is, is there any difference between Mukti and uh, Moksha? No difference. Means it to is say uh, synonymous. Two words, Mukti and Moksha, they are the same. There are other words, Nirvana, Kaivalya, these are all uh, the same as Moksha. Uh, next question is Gaurav Ji, Gaurav Bansal Ji. Please unmute and ask. Uh, am I audible? Uh, please ask. Yes. Uh, Swamiji, very uh, uh, small question. It is about just one particular word. So in the first uh, shloka that we read today, uh, it ends with uh, Shankarajaji saying, Tattva Viveka Prakaram Vakshyamaha. Uh, now, Vakshyama is a plural, right? It's not yeah, Vakshyami. Vakshyamaha plural, correct. So why is the you know single author using this uh, plural like that? Is it yeah, more about his style or... Uh, yeah, this is just a style. No, even in Hindi we say "ham ja rahe hain." So it's a, it's a style, and uh, uh, yeah, mostly we use like that in Sanskrit, uh, in Hindi, in all other languages. So okay. therefore, uh, uh, when I talk, also instead of saying "I," I may say "we." I you know uh, this uh, this sometimes make confusions. <laughs> but uh, it is it is like, like no it is there in our subconscious mind uh, we are uh, we are not uh, frequently using i but we are using we so okay, I don't, instead of uh, saying i say i say we say so hum bol rahe hain suno hum bol rahe hain so they say like no the same thing nothing special in that Got it, got it. I thought there might be some hidden meaning probably there, but... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Ooh. Yes. Okay, Samadhi. Hari Om, Samadhi. Hari Om. Thank you.
Any questions? Yeah. Uh, next Amin is. Uh, yeah. 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 Please proceed. Sorry, just to uh, just to add to that point, could um, Acharya ji also be uh, implying that it is not only his knowledge, but it is knowledge from his gurus also being passed down. That's why he's saying we. He's he's uh, making it plural. Yeah, in that way it is interpreted. Uh, but uh, why I stick to this style? Uh, in Bhashya, in many places, uh, Shankarajarji uses singular also. Oh, in okay. Jira Bhashya, at least I, mean, I remember in three uh, three places he uses singular. Okay. Uh, it doesn't mean because uh, if I say I or uh, if I say we, uh, it doesn't uh, mean that uh, if I say I, we, I am not following tradition. And if I say we, I am following tradition. No, I don't mean that. Uh, but uh, people say, I also heard this uh, this uh, interpretation. Uh, this uh, That is why I'm saying this is only an interpretation that can we can inter interpret like that. Uh, but uh, one thing for sure, uh, wherever Acharji says some special points, a special point in the sense, uh, and the definition of Maya or something like that, no? There he always uh, uh, uses the third person uh, plural, that is Achakshate, uh, Evam Bruvanti, Acharya Avadanti. Uh, it, in, in this sense, uh, he's quoting from the tradition. So that is there. It is a very uh, interesting uh, point that he always uh, referred to uh, his gurus and tradition by uh, quoting uh, their uh, but the special meanings of uh, anything that he states uh, in a special way. Otherwise, when he uh, says his own uh, opinion, like in uh, Taittiriya Bhashya, we can see that. Uh, similarly, in Brahma Sutra, Anandamaya Dhikarana. So there uh, he, uh, he will just separate uh, the main uh, uh, discussion and then say, uh, Tatra idam vaktavyam. No, something like that. Here we should uh, say something like this. So this can be added into this. So like that, he gives his own opinion if, if, we, if we, we say that. So that is uh, his style. Uh, but uh, this interpretation is there. I know that. Clear. Yes. Clear. Yeah. Next is Dr. Kamalaji. Namaste, Swamiji. Swamiji, this Anubandha Chadushtayam, mm. if the Anubandha Chadushtayam is the same for two books, then they belong to the same. But that way, when we take it, we can just mm. say that in the Karmakanda, the Anubandha Chadushtayam is different. And right, right. Nana Kanda, it is different. So each subject, uh, this is the a general formula. Yeah. Each, each subject, the adhikari differ, uh, differs, and uh, the subject differs, uh, the connection differs, the root, the purpose differs, everything. Each subject, according to the subject. But we can classify the books according to the Anubandha Chadushtayam. They all belong to one. Right. We can do that. So it is whatever we learn, as we learn like that only. Uh, we classify uh, the books according to the subject and the uh, adhikari uh, who can learn that. So that is also like, no, uh, uh, grahastha, anavana, prastha, and sannyasi, and brahmachari. That we have these four ashramas accordingly. Uh, we have uh, classified and uh, then uh, uh, with this adhikaris also even like uh, manda adhikari madhyama adhikari who, who is beginner and who is advanced and like that there are so many classifications namaste sir thank you uh, next question is uh, rajini ji you may unmute and ask or i can read it what you posted here
Okay, Swamiji, the question is this uh, from Rajini Ji, who, who asked the first question. Uh, the question is, I had heard of four types of mokshas. How can we have four types when moksha is liberation? Yeah, this uh, is a different uh, subject. You see, uh, moksha is according to each philosophy, their concept is diverse. There are so many types of moksha. In, uh, the four types is famous, but uh, there are various moktras. So this we will uh, discuss later. Uh, uh, here, what we say as moksha, we in the sense uh, as Vedanta says the moksha, that is what we are discussing here. And uh, uh, liberation according to the Vedantic school of thought. The other schools, they say, they also use the same uh, moksha. So that uh, I think, uh, uh, no, if we want to know, I can just say few differences, uh, just uh, if you are, uh, it is interesting. So according to one school of Vaishnavas, Vishnu Loga Gamanam is moksha. So attaining Vishnu Loka, the abode of Vishnu, is moksha for one school of Vaishnavas. And in that also, there are different uh, schools like Ramanujas, Madhvas, and Vallabhas. No, they are all different. They have different uh, mokshas. And in six, uh, six philosophies, at Nayaikas, they say, Atyantika Eka Vimshadi Dukkhadamsaha. They have enumerated 21 dukkhas, sorrows, sufferings, 21 type of sufferings. So, uh, moksha, what moksha means? Liberation from all these 21 type of sufferings. Now, you may ask, what are th those? So, <laughs> there are so many interesting things. And in uh, uh, Vaisheshika, what they say is, Karmadi abhave tattvachnyanad moksha. Vaisheshika says, karma is the cause for bondage. The cause for all suffering is karma. Therefore, if you can separate karma or destroy karma by knowledge, then you have moksha. So they, ne they never say, uh, knowing the self is moksha, knowing Brahman is moksha, knowing consciousness, existence is moksha. No. The separation from the karma is moksha. So that is uh, Vaisheshikas, the Kanadarishi's uh, school of thought. Now, Mimamsakas, Jaimini school of thought. They say, Sargadiriti, the heaven, the so called heaven. They have a special heaven that uh, their heaven is uh, not uh, what is uh, described uh, in Puranas. They have a special heaven that is uh, in that heaven you uh, experience moksha. So if you reach that heaven, that is moksha according to them. Now Sankhya and uh, Yoga philosophy. Now their moksha is at uh, uh, another uh, type. Prakriti purusha vivekena sorupa avasthanam moksha. Uh, uh, separating prakriti and purusha. Prakriti, the nature, purusha is consciousness. So separating purusha and prakriti with discriminative knowledge. So they have a special discriminative knowledge, which we call in, uh, in our philosophical terms, uh, ultra discriminative knowledge. 
it is very very fine a subtle type of discriminative knowledge there only you can separate uh, prakriti and purusha so with that knowledge if you are established in the in purusha that is in swarupa of consciousness then that is moksha so this uh, ultra discriminative knowledge should continue always until that is there you are in moksha this is the moksha of sankhya as well as patanjala yoga philosophy so therefore there are uh, so many differences in vaishnavas and shaivas and pashvatas though we have so many schools eh? so so don't worry about that now uh, we will learn this and slowly go to uh, the vedantic uh, liberation Yeah. Next question yeah. is from uh, Arizu Karubi Ji. Uh, hope I pronounced correctly the name. Apologies if it is wrong. And the question is uh, very good question. Uh, question is like this: As a mother of small children and a family person, how much time should one put into practicing my sadhana and study? And the second part is: Or can taking care of children be seen as a sadhana? third question is are there any differences between men and women when we talk about sadhana ha ah, is a practical question yes now sadhana as i mentioned today's uh, talk what vedantic sadhana means the vedantic sadhana means from limited existence of limited uh, awareness we reach to unlimited awareness existence this is the uh, sadhana this is the purpose of vedanta now uh hearing this you may wonder what does it mean how it is possible in my life it is possible if you are uh, a grahastha you are a householder taking care of your family children uh, husband and job and all other social activities you are fully busy with that but along with uh, all those activities one should find some time for just to contemplate on self just know whatever we are doing is our part of our uh, life it is related to our life maintaining our life but the reality is this is only a part time job this is not our real job so real job the real uh, duty of one human being is to know that it doesn't mean you are disconnecting you are activities from you no it doesn't mean it means along with those activities this awareness of self can be continued just like when we do uh, our duties we are busy with uh, our duties regardless that we always know our existence if something happen to ourselves for example if somebody is unhappy with you or unhappy uh, no he is calling or something is happening to us then we are aware about that we are hurt with that we feel 
bad about this. And what does it mean? It means with all these activities, knowingly or unknowingly, we have our awareness. We always protect our existence, our self-esteem, our uh, ego consciousness, our personality. Now, how it is possible? How is it possible? How it, uh, is this happening? We are busy with our activities, that is true. But we are not leaving ourselves. Therefore, fix a time, find some uh, free time for this practice uh, most uh, is probably uh, in the morning. Perhaps uh, morning is, uh, we can say, a free time for us. Get up early, try to get up early and find some time and start with. So if, uh, if, we can, if you can do half an hour, 20 minutes, that is enough. Because that uh, half an hour sadhana will give you support for everything. So you can uh, gradually improve yourself by this achievement, this practice. The second question, uh, taking care of children, is it also sadhana? That I already mentioned this. Taking care of the children is also, can be sadhana if we uh, Take care of children as our duty as sadhana. We say our dharma, our right practice of karma. Being a mother, the mother has the dharma, the right practice to take care of the children, her children. So this, uh, this emotion, this thought will make the all uh, being into sadhana. So therefore, it can be made like that. Any, any uh, duty we perform, if you are uh, going, uh, if you are uh, doing some job, so there also we can think about that. So, the, uh, because the mind makes this possible. And the third part of the question is, uh, uh, women and uh, men, uh, both can practice, there is no doubt. This, we have already discussed this point in last, last sessions. Uh, Related to Vedantic sadhana, if it is for moksha, liberation, it is not uh, the practice of religion or karmakanda. Of course, it is practice of religion, part of religion, but it is not practice of religion. Then in religious practices, we need to follow certain rules for the completion of the, that particular practice. So each uh, uh, ritual uh, has uh, a adhikari as we hear, what we mentioned as adhikari. The performer should be qualified for that particular performance. But in the case of jnana, case of uh, atma, there is no question such. Because in our Vedantic textbooks, 
is clearly mentioned. Manushya matrasya adhikari. The manushya matrasya adhikari. The human being is the adhikari here. So every human being can be a seeker of moksha, living being. There is no doubt. But when we take up any karmakanda part of our uh, religion, we should rightly know we are if we are uh, eligible for that or not, whether it is uh, my duty or not. Sometimes it is uh, very confusing. We never bother to know is this duty is our or not? Can I do or not? So in that case, it is very, very, you know, what you say, it should be rightly uh, understood. We should bother to know what uh, we should do as a practice. According to the system, we should know that. Okay. So I think uh, we have yeah, time of the time. Yeah. Any question remains? We can take up uh, in the group. Uh, no, uh, I can send you the voice message or text message. So now I think uh, uh, we can plan for the discussions so before next class if it is possible everything is uh, no it is convenient for you uh, take up the discussion of these subjects what we discussed so make a discussion group or uh, or we can just put this uh, uh, no, uh, this discussion subject in the group and interested uh, students can join. Okay. Okay. So we conclude? Yes. Sir. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purna mudaschate, Purnasya Purna madaya, Purna meva vasishate, Om shanti shanti shanti, Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha, Hari Om.